Objection. With a dramatic growth in technology over the past years, we have seen a great increase in terms of complexity and depth that the games can now achieve. We can now make amazingly detailed 3D models, complex animations, not having to worry about compressing audio files, and even play with complete strangers online whenever we want. We truly live on a special age for games, where a hobby has gone from a simple thing to distract us for some time to full-on narratives that can easily rival and surpass those of other media while giving us the unique opportunity to take charge in these adventures. But just like any other form of storytelling, video games are also subject to the great curse of falling into tropes that at times can tire out some people. Be it playing as a protagonist who suffers from amnesia, becoming the chosen one to save the world with a special gift, the rival character to our protagonist that we want to overcome, having to go through a set of trials so we can prove our worth, an ancient but advanced civilization that suddenly disappeared, or just stopping an ultimate threat from conquering the world. But from all the tropes in the world, I think Nintendo's favorite must be the evil doppelganger one, because we see it in a lot of their games. Be it Super Mario, Legend of Zelda, F-Zero, Pokemon, Kirby, Kid Icarus, and even Metroid, in which case there are so far two different clones of the heroic bounty hunter. And ever since then, some people have been asking themselves the same question. That being, who is the strongest doppelganger between these two? The more accurate parasitic clone of Samus, or the radioactive phase on given form? Well, before we get to the main event of answering this question, let's first go through a brief reminder of the origins of each doppelganger to help newcomers to the series get up to speed. Just in time. During the opening of the popular Metroid Fusion, Samus is attacked by a deadly DNA organism known as the X Parasites, which she only survived thanks to a Metroid serum that destroyed the X in her body, since they used to be their natural predators. However, some ex-parasites manage to infect pieces of Samus' various suit since it's composed of techno-organic material, and those remains were sent to the BSL station for further study, where suddenly the surviving members in the armor were able to combine to become a near-identical clone of Samus, managing to take control over her old various suit and weaponry in the process, which will be known as the SAX. Considering the X-Parasite's abilities, it's also probable that the SAX contains Samus' memories, which make her a considerable threat since she has some of her combat experience at hand, and she roams around the BSL station destroying anything that comes in her way. On the other hand, we have Dark Samus, who was born from the combination of Samus' stolen face-on suit with the radioactive face-on at the end of Metroid Prime who later made her first debut in Metroid Prime 2 before becoming the main threat on its sequel, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Even though she also shares Samus' DNA, because of the Faison's radioactive properties, she can be considered to be more of a separate entity in some way, given how the Faison is capable of creating sentient beings like the Aangs in Prime 2. What makes this clone particularly dangerous is that she is extremely cunning and unpredictable hatching master plans to take over the galaxy like we see in Prime 3, while also being able to incorporate Phazon into her attacks with no repercussions. And I think the reason why people gravitate towards these two so much is because, a difference from other doppelgangers created by Nintendo, these two are considerable threats in the games where they appear, which if left alone could cause mass destruction. And the fact that Samus herself harbors some fear towards them speaks volumes to how dangerous both of them truly are in their own regard. 
But before I go ahead and analyze who will be the winner in this fight, I feel like I first need to establish some ground rules to help explain the criteria I'll be using to determine the outcome. First, the loser of this fight will be determined by which of the two clones is forced to revert back to their original form, if you may. This means the moment that they would either turn into a core X or phase on particles is the moment I will consider them defeated, since at that point we would have a scenario that we can't truly fact check with the games that I will explain a little bit more later in the video. And second, the analysis of this fight will be considering that this battle will take place on a neutral arena, where none of the two clones could find a way to heal themselves mid-fight. And I will also take into consideration the arsenal abilities that we see them perform in the game as further combat strategies. So this way I can stick to the source material as much as possible and offer you guys with the best results. So then, without any further delays, who would emerge victorious if these two doppelgangers were to fight each other? Well, how about we start by first taking a look at the weaponry available to them. The easiest one to determine is the SAX, because she literally has a fully powered Avaria suit from Super Metroid. Or I guess now it's technically the one from Metroid of the Red, but you get the idea. None of this makes sense. Having weapons such as the Ice Beam, Power Bombs, Super Missiles, and even the Screw Attack, clearly making her a force to be reckoned with. Dark Samus, on the other hand, only really has the face on suit, considering that's what the essence of Metroid Prime stole before becoming this clone. But I think it's safe to assume that she still has some other of Samus's weapons available to her, considering some of her attacks in the Prime games. So I guess in this sense, the SAX clearly has an advantage, considering that Samus was able to take down Dark Samus with less firepower on their first encounter in Ag and Wastes. So imagine the results with a fully powered Varia suit. But then again, Dark Samus does have the advantage of being able to use the phase on at her disposal. Which, a reminder to those who might not know, it's the galaxy's most radioactive substance, capable of making beings mutate, giving life to inanimate objects, and even destroying a fully decked gravity suit Samus in a matter of minutes. Considering the amount of damage Samus' Varia suit takes in the fight in Prime 2, this might suggest that the phase on the Dark Samus is using as ammunition isn't fully concentrated, and thus loses some of its powers in the process and therefore would require a lot more to do considerable harm to something like a fully equipped SAX, if you may. However, as we see on the final fight of Metroid Prime 3, Dark Samus gains many new abilities, from which among them the most notable one probably is her power to create clones of herself, which are referred to as Dark Echoes. Which also, by the way, fun fact, this happens to be the same subtext for the Japanese version of Metroid Prime 2. The SAX in theory could do the same thing. X parasites can rapidly reproduce asexually and it plays some role in the narrative of Metroid Fusion, where Adam informs Samus that there are multiple SAXs roaming around the BSL station. But I think I should state that this ability comes with a giant asterisk at the end of it because of two simple reasons. One is that the X clones would technically have a consciousness and will of their own, compared to Dark Samus's hive mind where the clones follow her commands. And while the XAX can mutate into a monster version of itself as we see during the final fight in Fusion, I'm not going to take this ability into consideration since in the game she just hops from one site to the other and doesn't do much else. But firepower alone can only get you so far and seeing how these two could probably be considered to be equally strong in some regard, I think it's the battle of the brains where we can truly determine who would be the ultimate victor of this fight. As we know from the conversations in Metroid Fusion, the X-Parasites can copy the memories and knowledge of their hosts, which means that the SAX technically has the same memories and to some extent experience that Samus has in terms of combat. Dark Samus, on the other hand, shows some signs of being highly intelligent and creative, being able to adapt to multiple situations and coming up with plans to her benefits. We see this with how she destroys a light crystal behind Samus in the intro of Prime 2, the way she activates the elevator in Sanctuary Fortress to avoid her from running away, and even coming up with a master plan to take over the galaxy and corruption. But like some of you might be quick to point out, considering that Metroid Fusion takes place after the Prime Trilogy, this means that the SAX would probably have Samus' memories of those events and be able to know how to handle the Phazon clone in combat. But 
part of me wants to say that this might not automatically give her the advantage in combat. I think that even though the X parasites can replicate memories, we don't really see the SAX using much of this to her advantage in the game, in a way perhaps showing us some of the limits of their mental abilities. Because if this weren't the case, then why didn't she use the Ice Beam against the Metroids on the restricted sector instead of just firing the super missiles at random? Or even why didn't she use any different tactics against Samus on the final fight once she started showing some resistance? So, considering this, it's safe to say that the SAX mostly fights on pure instincts, trying to overwhelm her opponents by sheer brute force. Which Dark Samus could probably use to her advantage to come up with a battle strategy that will help her secure the victory. And it's because of this simple factor why I think that in the end, Dark Samus will clearly be the winner of this combat. Because although the SAX has immense firepower and Samus's memories at her disposal, she might not be capable of thinking like her or coming up with a new strategy mid-fight. Which means that the Faison clone could eventually overwhelm her and force the Parasite to revert back into its core X form, thus causing her to be defeated. After all, in one of Metroid Fusion's monologues, Samus herself describes the SAX as a mindless killing machine something that clearly isn't the case with Dark Samus. But hey, Albert, you might be saying, couldn't the SAX just infect Dark Samus when she returns to her core X form and steal her DNA like she did with Samus? Well, here's where my previous disclaimer comes into play, since we never got to see how the X parasites react with the Phazon. So we don't really know what would happen and thus would enter into the area of pure speculation. We know that the Phazon can kill a Metroid rather quickly, so would it do the same to their prey? If capable of surviving the radiation, does Dark Samus have enough unique organic DNA for the X parasites to copy and not just become another version of Samus? Will the X mutate if exposed to the substance long enough like it happened with other creatures? And the same questions apply the other way around. Does the X parasite in its original form have enough sentience to be corrupted by Dark Samus's power? Could Phazon change their behavior or abilities like it did for the Metroids? Or could Dark Samus just kill a Core X with pure radiation alone? These are questions that we will probably never get an answer to since it's unlikely that we will see either threat interact with each other in a future game. Considering how Yoshio Sakamoto has hinted at what he would like to do next in the series with the chosen memories in Samus Returns, and also how producer Kensuke Tanabe once confirmed in an interview that the story of both Phazon and Dark Samus are officially over. However, part of me wants to say that I do think that Dark Samus could have the power to corrupt the SAX's mind since she was able to do the same with Samus in Prime 3. But then again, if she was able to resist the effects in that game, then it's probable that the X-Clone could do the same, especially since it doesn't have a PED suit. Hence why I didn't take this ability into consideration as a viable combat strategy, if you may. But in the end, I still stand by the fact that I think Dark Samus would ultimately be the victor in this fight. Although a single SAX has enough firepower to overwhelm her opponent, I believe that because of her higher intelligence, Dark Samus could find a way to outsmart and defeat her opponent using her phase on abilities to her advantage. Nevertheless, these two enemies are quite the formidable foes in their own regards, and I think they serve as great examples on how to properly do the doppelganger trope in video games. The way that developers manage to make these two enemies something that a player might dread encountering with only using game design is extremely impressive. With this, they were able to create an intimidating and ominous feeling to these characters, that in a way helps reflect the true destructive power that our hero possesses and how terrible it can be if used by the wrong hands. It wasn't enough with giving us dialogue, music, and some subtle animations to show us how our hero fears its own inner malice, but they went one step above and ended implementing this mindset with their gameplay that ended creating some of the most memorable and evil villains in the company's history. Something I consider to be a great achievement once you take a step back and consider what they were able to create with the limited tools and hardware available at that time, which ultimately created some of the most memorable moments many of us have ever experienced in any form of storytelling, and it's an experience that only the format of video games can truly accomplish.
Oh, you?